Ivan, can you please join us? Hello, welcome. Hello, welcome. Welcome. Hello, welcome. So it is interesting that you say that taking the F out of authentication fraud aware identities. So we must be very aware yes. when we are dealing with emails because we know that sometimes even the human human capacity can be the key key problem. So please, even Perfect. So I have the excellent position of standing between you and lunch. So my commitment to you is to be quick. And uh, I would certainly like to thank you for the invitation today and the ability to present. Um, what I'm going to do today is actually quite simple. I am going to talk about four observations. One, insight. And I'm going to apply it to some examples. And then I will give you one very simple step for what you can do. And the reason being is that this topic is a topic of interest. And people, you know, will hear and understand and say, yes, yes, this, this is interesting, but what do I do? How do I actually move forward? Huh? I need a magic button. Ah, yes. So true story, um, I was presenting in front of NASA, a room full of literally rocket scientists. Do you know the one piece of equipment we couldn't get to work? So, I, so Entra's data card, if you've never heard of us, it's because we're doing our job. The things that we do just work. If you have a piece of plastic in your wallet with a chip on it, there's a 90% chance it came off of one of our machines. And you don't think about it when you use it. You don't think about the security when you go to the point of sale. You don't think about the security that's in the background at your bank. You also don't think about the chip that's in your passport. You don't think about the communication that that passport is having with NATO and other international agencies so that you go and you get the stamp. It just works. And one of the things that, you know, we talk about and what my goal is to do, the four things I'm going to talk about, almost everybody in the room is going to say, yes, I know this. I've, I've heard of this before, but I'm going to invite you to think about it a little bit differently. And the reason being is that if you looked at some data, you could draw the conclusion that if I, once we have enough people at the tram stop, then the tram comes. And your data would support this conclusion. But we all know that's not the way that it works. But if you're basic on that data and experience, and you're saying, well, I want more trams to come, so I am gonna put my effort into putting more people on the terminal. You're working hard, but you're not getting results. And when I, I'm very, very fortunate to get invited to many conversations. And something that I hear very often, and I'm sure you hear very often, is the company with two or, I, two or three IT staff, and they're like, we are so busy, we can't even think about doing anything new. We're, we're, we're up to here. And we ask, what are you doing? It's like, oh, we're, we're patching the chimney, we're, we're patching the windows, we're patching the cat door. And you say, yes, but your front door is open. It's like talking to somebody in a boat with a bucket that is madly scooping out the water, and you say, that there's, there's a hole in your boat. You're like, I'm too busy. I'm too busy scooping out the water. And this is what we see very often. And let's put this into perspective. I could show you some scary statistics. We all know these numbers, but this is a fun thing you can do yourself. Go to Google, type in how to hack a website. 265 million results. And if you don't mind some really crazy heavy metal music in the background, you can learn in about 15 minutes. It's not good or bad. This is the reality that we deal with today. Second observation. So what we are seeing is there's been an evolution. There's been an evolution at first 
You know, we started with the important things. Banks, governments, put locks on all the doors, very secure, PKI, lots of policies, you know, the, the machines, with, you know, all of those things. And then, of course, we move on to the corporate world. Well, we want to do VPN, or I want to be able to get access to my mail on the web. And now we're looking at the next generation. And what's happened is there's been an evolution of tools that go with this. And I'm looking into your eyes, and I can see everybody's like, yes, yes, I, I know this. The reality is when you talk about the best practice, you talk about the company, and they're saying, we're too busy scooping water out to do number two. I can't even think about number three. It must be too complicated. I'm just trying to get the water out of the boat. And the reason that it's complicated is that if you're an IT administrator, you need to think about these things. You have your different groups, your different applications, and it becomes very complicated. Or at least it seems very complicated. And then just when you get the picture right, just when you get your Rubik's Cube all set up, it changes. Start scooping out more water from the boat. And we've made a very good business out of this. There's mature products. These have been on, the, you know, talking about different applications, different risk levels. This is not new. This is established technology that's available today. Now, if we were having a security conversation, I would probably say something like all of these major attacks started because the front door was open. They were able to go in pretending to be somebody else. But now I'm going to invite you to think about this a little bit differently. What were they stealing? What was so valuable that that's what the robbers were going into and taking? And last year, we saw the biggest train robbery of all time. And this was in America. And so nearly one out of every two identities has been compromised. One out of every two. So you have to ask yourself, well, the, the front door was unlocked. We need to, that's a security. But what are they doing with this? And so we're already beginning to see the trends are changing. The F is coming out. Fraud. Account takeover fraud is happening. And it's more sophisticated. And this is only in nine months of the year. And the way that they are going after it is far more intelligent. So in other words, instead of just going and taking your money, they are setting up other accounts. They are setting up other things. And you're like, okay, yes, I, I, I know this. Fraud is bad. But what is emerging from this is that the best trick the devil ever pulled was convincing people he doesn't exist. A quote from the movie. Which is, if you look on the balance sheet of companies, credit defaults are skyrocketing. It's because they missed the fraud. It goes through the system. They deliver the product or the service as they do. But because the person doesn't exist, they're not paying the bill. It's a perfect crime. So one of the other observations is we have very mature technology that is able to detect over 60 different kinds of frauds. It's not just breaking in through the door and being able to take that. And, and there's some very, very interesting ones. We had, uh, you're gonna laugh at this. Last year was Canada's 150th anniversary. I know you're thinking there are houses here that are older than that. And so the Mint made these special coins, special coins with 150 and pictures on them. And you could go to the Mint store and you could buy them with your credit card. And we knocked on the Mint door and said, you have a problem. And they're like, what, what's the problem? And people were taking credit cards, buying $10,000 worth of $150 coins, and then they took the bags of money to the bank and they paid their credit card bill and collected all the air miles, collected all the loyalty points. And then they would go back and repeat. That fraud cost a major financial institution almost $30 million. 
It's brilliant when you think about it, but having the ability to detect that. So now you're asking yourself, okay, if I'm too busy scooping the water out of my boat, how am I gonna do this? This is Star Trek, or at least it seems that way. And the layered approach, we're not the only ones. Again, this is an observation that the experts in the world are saying, yes, yes, this is what you must do. And even though it's the picture of a mobile device, th this could be any device, whether it's a wearable or a machine or a phone. And the ability to put the layers down, the ability that before you put something on it, you make sure that it's a good device. And we learned this. We have a network of over 500 billion devices that we can tell if one is good or bad. And the, the way that we are able to do that is, for instance, if I take my phone and I try to break into your account, and then I take my phone and break into your account, and then into your account, this device is gonna glow hot. So even though I don't know who the person is, and it's the ability to detect these patterns. So what this does, this is a trick question. I'll ask the question, why? Why do you have brakes on a car? And the obvious answer is to say, well, you have brakes because you can slow down. The insightful answer is you have brakes because it allows you to go faster. It allows you to do more. And again, these are established technologies. This is not new. This is the orchestration. And this provides an opportunity. So when you're looking at the situation differently, there's an opportunity to solve the problem and do more. And I'll give you an example. Users are different. We tend to think that people stay the same, but that's not true. It used to be you didn't wear a helmet because the haircut was more important. And then you think, well, everybody wears a helmet because you have to. It, your hair gets a little messy and sometimes you forget it. But today, this man is happy to be wearing his helmet. And I know you're thinking, this guy's a little crazy, he's not wearing a helmet. Well, that's not true because it is there. But it comes out when he needs it. This company's been growing 300% year over year because it's solving a problem. And why is this important? This is the fourth observation. Because we have to learn to speak the right language. We have to talk to the right person. You have to talk to the person that's gonna be using it and not to train, but to speak a language that they know. And this is where you let the technology do the work. A very good clue is when you're saying we need to train the user. As soon as you hear that, stop, let's look into this. Because as we have the different generations of technology, we can put them together in a way that is very intuitive for the user. Just like the man wearing the helmet. He's not thinking about the complex technology that detects when he's been hit by a car. You're the same way that when you sit in your car, you're not thinking about the way that it knows how far your seat is from the steering wheel so that if something bad happens, it knows how to tighten your seatbelt and launch the airbag. And what this does, it creates the opportunity to give a spectacular user experience because the technology is doing the work, not the user. And as we pointed out here in the intro, usually it's the person that's between the screen and the chair. That's where the problem comes. That's where the vulnerability is. And this happens today. This is a real example. This is one of my corporate systems. And this is how I log in. I push a button, I smile at my camera, and then it asks me, what do you want to do? Yes, no, and if all of a sudden it comes up and it's not me, I hit the red button because somebody needs to know about this, and then I'm in. What didn't you see? No password. Exactly. And people are thinking, wow, that's Star Trek. No, we use this today. We use this every single day. And we had a very interesting conversation earlier about GDPR. And what's interesting is the ability here 
to say, what is it that you're doing? Because what GDPR is, it's your information. You need to give consent. You need to give permission. And the technology in the background says, yes, I've collected Evan's consent. This is what he is doing. And it signs it. So if the auditor or compliance person ever has to go back, they can unwind it and see exactly what I've done. Compliance. Do you know what else this does? PSD2. Because it means I have been bound to that transaction. You can trace the transaction right back to me. Did you see it? No, it's just like the helmet. So this is another example. Our HR system is, and I log in maybe four times a year. Sometimes I need a report, maybe a receipt for tax. So I will tell you what my password is for the HR system. And it's right there. It's, I forgot my password. So why am I talking about this when we're talking about the front door being unlocked? This is where we're moving into the opportunity. Because you're like, okay, this is great. How do I get there from here? It doesn't take much. You can do very simple things to make your house a little bit more difficult to get into than the next house. And that's where it starts. And by taking established technology. So when I reset my password, it sends me an SMS. Okay, that, that's kind of neat. That's old, it's been around since forever. But then if I don't answer the SMS and click the button, it will call me. And if I have a smartphone, it'll send me a push notification because it's smart. And even to have things like a little timer that says, we sent you an SMS. Because remember, as a user, if you're staring at your screen and you're like, I hit the button, now what? Those little pieces of information. And the reason that I'm showing this is not to get technical, but it's that it's not complicated. That box that's over on the left that's doing the work, that can be in your data center, that can be a virtual appliance, that can be in the cloud. This is not a complicated diagram. This is very easy to do. And the barriers to entry have never been lower. So when we talk about user experience, let's go back to our, our guy in the boat that's always scooping out the water. Why is he or she so busy? It's because they're busy doing stuff like this. They're resetting passwords. They're doing the, the dishes. They're doing the day-to-day -day work. And by automating that, so in other words, in saying, when I get my password wrong, it automatically detects you have a problem. As a user, I don't have to call. I don't have to put on a helmet. It calls me and says, you've got a problem and this is how we fix it. And here's another example. This is an actual uh, provisioning a device, getting it started to go. The really important thing about this slide is look at the time, 2022. I started at 2022. I finished at 2023. That's how simple it should be. That's how easy it can be. We have this today. And so one of the insights, you're saying, okay, great. How do I start? What do I do? When I go to my board, I have my list of priorities and they say, you have to patch the windows, you have to patch the chimney, you have to patch the cat door. You do it while you're doing this. This is the elegance of it. Office 365, most people in this room are gonna be having a conversation about this at some point. And this is just one application. And when you think about Office 365, there's three ways that they're going to get at your data. There's three ways they can walk through the front door. And if you put the measure in place as part of this to fix the Office 365 problem, you've now put a lock on your front door. You've put a cork in the hole of the boat. And that's how you start. So some final thoughts. One of the things that we've learned 
is that not only is the technology changing the user experience, it's changing the business experience. And what I'm showing here are these levels of maturity. And you probably recognize your business in here somewhere. And what it's showing that, you know, if you're worried about scooping water out of the boat, you just, I, I have my application VPN, I need to, and that's fine. You have the more transformative, we're talking about Office 365. But where the real value is, is over here on the far right hand side, which is it transforms the way you do business. So it used to be to get the technology to do this, to put the cork in the boat, was expensive, you needed big projects. We have our developer Olympics. It's a lot of fun. And our record is eight minutes. Eight minutes from deploying Office 365 to having locks on the door. So you know what, let's, let's take somebody who's never done it before, they could probably do it in less than a day. And the business models that go with it are evolving as well. To be able to start with, you know, I'll start with my IT team. I'll start with 10 people. No problem. In two minutes, you're ready to go. You've downloaded. And this is where, you know, when, we, when I showed the slide of, you know, step one, step two, step three, and people are thinking, it's like, I can't even think about step three, I'm stuck in step two, I'm scooping the water out of the boat. It is possible to leapfrog. It is possible to move forward. And like having the brakes on the car, it's not just about, okay, I need to put a lock on the front door. When you do this and you get it right, you're giving a much better user experience. And that's not just to your employees, that's to your external users and your customers. And that makes the difference in terms of the business. So what I'll leave you with is what's coming down the pipe. And you know, I showed you stuff that we have in production today. This is what's in our test kitchens. What we've been talking about has been, okay, how do you transact? How do you monitor the fraud piece? And more importantly, how do you connect these all together? Because what's happening is today, most transactions, over 60% of transactions are still happening face to face. And I'm not saying that you can get that down to zero. You might get it down to 55% or 50%, but that is still a massive step forward. And what it allows you to do, so for instance, having things like Instead of going into a bank and showing the ID to the person on the other counter and they look at me and they look at that, you get the machine to automate that. We have established technology today that I can take a picture with my phone of a check and then put that check into my bank account. Using the same technology, I can take a picture of my identification and then look at my camera. And it says, is Evan the person in the picture? Is this? the right document? And if the answer is yes to yes, then move forward. Did I have to go in and do something face to face? The answer is no. And this is what is coming. And we're not talking about, oh, five years from now. We're talking about next June. And these are also technologies that are gonna help you leapfrog. So what I wanna leave you with today is change the perspective look at some of the same data in a different way. Because we get used to those arguments. Well, the tram comes when you have enough people on the platform. And once you realize there's a different way of looking at the system, and this is how things really work, it only goes in one direction. You can't go back to not knowing. Do you think the person with no helmet is gonna go back to wearing a helmet? Today, I can pay for the tram with my phone. It's so easy. And you don't even think about it because it works. And so what this does is it creates that, why do you have brakes on a car? Your, this is the, how do you do make IT the uh, profit generator as opposed to a cost center? This is how you achieve that. And it's happening today. Thank you very much for your attention. Happy to answer any questions. 
Um, and thank you to our host, Info Group, for having us here.